Hey guys, in the previous video for the range query series, we talked about what range query problems are and some of the range query data structures that are commonly used to solve those problems. In this video, we'll be talking about prefix arrays, which are one of the most useful and the easiest to understand and implement range query data structures. To begin with, let me give you a simple problem. Imagine that you have an array A consisting of n integers and I'll be asking you Q queries, each of only one single type T1. And in each query, I'll be asking you, what is the sum of the elements in the range L2R? Right, that's it. This is, these are known as range sum queries. So RSQ or range sum queries. Now you'd like to solve these prob uh, queries very efficiently, as efficiently as you can. So there are Q queries and N is the size of your array. We all know that we can solve this in big of N into Q. But how to do it in a better, more efficient way? I know many of you might be knowing how to solve it. So we'll have something more advanced coming for them in this video. Now, there's something cool known as prefix arrays that can help you solve this. So prefix array is defined as prefix and I define prefix of i to be the sum of the first i elements. This is prefix of i. So that would mean that p of 1 would simply be the first element or some of the first one elements. That is the first one element, a1. And then you'll have p of n to be equal to the sum of all the elements. That is some of the first n elements. So if I define prefix of i to be this and I have an array named prefix, where I have the values for prefix 1, 2, 3, so on till prefix n, then I claim that I can solve each query in big of 1 time. How can I do that? So to solve a query, it's very simple and here's how you do it. I claim that the answer to a query L, R is going to be nothing but P of R minus P of L minus 1. Now you might ask me how is that true? I recommend that you take your pen and paper and see what P of R is and what P of L minus 1 is. And you'll reach to the conclusion. Let me tell you. P of R is the sum of the first R elements. Whereas P of L minus 1 is the sum of first L minus 1 elements. And if you think about it, these cancel out each other. And you'll be left with A of L plus A of L plus 1 plus so on till A of R. And if you think about it, the query L, R was asking you about this sum only. Now, it is clear that each query can be answered in big O of one time if we had this prefix array. How can we have this prefix array efficiently? Now, I claim that you can have this prefix array in big O of n time. Let me show you how. And it's better illustrated through code. So we know that prefix of one is nothing but the first element of the array itself. We know that prefix of two is a1 plus a2. That is also true. I can better write it as prefix of two equal to prefix of one plus a of two, isn't it? Similarly, prefix of three equals to a1 plus a2 plus a3 which can better be written as prefix of 2 plus a3. Or if you read it uh, more smartly, it would read that the sum of the first three elements is the sum of the first two elements plus the third element, which makes sense. So sum of first i elements is nothing but the sum of the first i minus 1 elements plus the i-th element. And now to build this prefix array, all I need to do is, I need to run this loop once. for every i from 2 to n, I do this. And you can see that this is this code is big of n, right? Because this loop runs only n minus 1 or n times. And you have your prefix array in big of n time. Now to build the prefix array, you used O of n time. To answer each query, you'll be using O one time per query. So that's O of Q overall. And you solve the problem in big of N plus Q, which previously used N into Q time. This is a huge improvement. 
Let's see what are the other problems you can solve using the same idea. You can solve for range zor queries. Think about how. You can have a prefix zor array and prefix of i would mean the zor of the first i elements that is a1 zor a2 zor a3 and so on today. zor a. This is prefix of i when I'm trying to solve range zor queries. And when someone asks me, hey, what is the zor in the range L to R? I would take the zor of the first R elements and zor it with the uh, zor of the first L minus 1 elements because here is how it works. I am targeting for the range L to R. And I know that prefix of R is nothing but A1 zor A2 zor A3. So until zor A R. And if I zor this thing with A1 zor A2, so until zor A of L minus 1, which is prefix of L minus 1, these two zor will get cancelled, cancelled, so until the here. And you will again be left with the thing you were aiming for. You were hoping for range zor query L to R. You will get that in O1 time. You can build your prefix array in a similar way. This plus gets replaced by a zor. That's it. So you can solve zor, uh, range zor queries in big of n plus q using the same concept. You can solve range product queries given that 0 does not appear there and we are not bothered about integer overflows. In hoping that there is no integer overflow in the language we are working with. Then you can solve range product queries given that 0 does not appear as any element. So a of i not equals to 0. Then you can solve range product queries as well using this simple concept. Let's come to range min queries. Can you solve range min queries using this concept? And I tell you, you cannot. Think about why. Also, there is a code challenge coming up for you guys at the end of the video. So make sure that you try that challenge out as well. Now, you cannot solve range min queries using the same concept. And I'll tell you why. When I talk about min of x, y, And let's say I tell you that min of x comma y is x. Can you tell me if I told you x is 10, so this result is 10, can you tell me what is the value of y? You actually cannot tell me what is the value of y. Because y could be anything uh, starting from 10 up till infinity. So y could be literally any value. You cannot tell me what is y here. But if I did the same thing and I told you, okay, hey, sum of 5 comma 7, oh, sorry, x comma y, let's say 5 comma y is 12, then you will take me, uh, you will take just one second to tell me, hey, y equals to 7. You can predict it. What is the difference between these two functions, min and sum? What is the difference between, in between difference between these two functions? The difference is that sum is an invertible function. You can tell me given one parameter, what is the other parameter? You can invert the function sum and its invert is basically subtraction. But min is not invertible. Since min is not invertible, you cannot take a prefix of r and you can remove prefix of l minus 1 from it. Also, other properties such as associativity and commutativity are also important. But the major difference that you need to understand is that min is not invertible, whereas sum is. Similarly, max cannot be inverted, so you cannot use the concept of prefix arrays on that. The product is, the function product is actually invertible. If, if f is a function of product, product xy is nothing but x into y. This function is invertible, given that one of these, none of these is a zero. Because let's say I told you, hey, prod of, um, product of x comma zero, equals to 0. There's no way for you to tell me, hey, what's x? But if both of these were not 0, and I gave you x comma y equal to, let's say, 20, and I told you, hey, y equal to 2, you can find out x. x equals to 10, obviously. So that's the idea. A function should be invertible for you to, if you are using prefix arrays the, uh, on a function f, you want to find out range f queries, you are applying a function f on the array from l to r, then to use the idea of prefix arrays, the function needs to be invertible. So this was the basic lecture and let me give you a code homework. I would be really happy if someone posts the solution to this. 
and I'll pin pin the comment so that others can use this. I'd like you to build a class named prefix array data structure. This should support two public uh, methods. One of them is basically the constructor. It should accept a data vector. Imagine that I'm trying to solve some range, some queries, and I'm working with an array V. I'll be passing my array V to your prefix array DS. It should accept that and it should use as the underlying data vector. From now onwards, I'll simply be calling queries and I'll be asking, hey, what's the sum in the range L to R? You should answer that to me in O1 time. Now, I would be really happy if someone implements this in a good manner. The query thing should run in O1 time. And if you can template this class so that it also accepts the method of function F to be applied, then that would be superb. I should be able to use this class like this. I have a vector v on which I need to run range some queries. I can declare a prefix array ds like this. And from now onwards, I can call my query helper dot query. Hey, tell me what is the sum in the range 0 to 2 and it should print 1 as per this vector. Similarly, I can uh, go ahead and keep asking it as many queries as I would like. It should keep answering them in O1 time. This should build in O n time. And that should run only once when I declare the data structure I need. So hope you liked this video. In the next video, we'll be talking about what happens to range sum queries or no, let's talk about how what happens to range min queries without any updates. We saw we cannot solve them like this, but there is a data structure known as parse table, which I'd like to cover in the next video that can solve range minimum queries in big of one time. So we'll discover that in the next video. Uh, till then, goodbye. I hope you like this one.